Okay, um, this is Mr. Montgomery, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to beat the turnaround project on virtual business. I know some of you are having some difficulties to it, uh, some of you that have been working at a pretty fast pace and already got to this point. Um, with that said, one of the things that you need to focus on is having more product out on the floor. Uh, if you look at the original one that you open up with, there's not a whole lot of stuff that's on uh, the floor. Uh, so getting a lot of product, getting a lot of shelves out there, uh, also categorizing your stuff, putting products together that are complementary items to each other. So basketball, uh, basketball's next to basketball hoops. Um, helmets, baseball, batting gloves, bats, all that stuff in the same area there too. Uh, one of the things that you're noticing with this screen right now, this is during the holiday season. You will get extremely busy during the holiday season, regardless kind of, of what you're doing. Um, you know, if you're advertising somewhat correctly, you should get an influx of people uh, during the holiday season. If you look at um, this time, it's December 15th uh, up here on the date. I know that's kind of hard to see with this, but um, it's December 15th. I got a big crowd here. One of the issues that I have right now is that I'm not um, hiring enough people. Um, I would make more money than the weekly profit of $10,000 um, if I was to hire a lot more staff because I'm doing a lot in sales, but I'm also losing a lot of business. So if you look at reports and go to comments and messages, I have 49 people daily saying they're leaving because there are not enough people to wait on them. So that's an issue with uh, staffing. So during the holiday season, you're probably gonna need four or five cash registers. The rest of the year, two or three uh, to get by. But from November, especially on the sporting goods store, from November, that Black Friday date, one of the last no days, uh, Fridays in November, you're gonna get uh, really busy, okay? And you may even wanna extend your store hours. So if you go to actions and go to your staffing, I would probably want to increase my store hours and even open up possibly during uh, hours that wouldn't normally be open. Um, generally during the regular year, I, I only open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, you can have stockers on those other shifts to stock shelves while you're not busy, which is also a good idea. Um, that's one thing you can do. Uh, but keeping your payroll at a decent amount is, is a good part of uh, making sure that you keep your costs down. Uh, so with that said, I should probably add some people, add salespeople, all that stuff. I'm not going to right now just because I want to get through this section uh, for you. But as I get through December, you're going to notice it's uh, going to be pretty busy here. Uh, a large amount of traffic coming in and out of the store. Okay. Um, and then once it hits December 25th, it is going to get extremely dead. Okay. One of the things you're also going to notice with this game, as I speed it up, let me keep going here, I'm at 500 now. All right, I'm after Christmas, so what I'm going to see is a decrease in profit, okay? I, I didn't go too below yet, but I'm still, still making positive totals, but you're going to have a hard time making money um, in the months uh, prior to uh, January and February are very hard, difficult months for the retail market, especially in sporting goods. Uh, so you're not going to make a lot of money there. Your best time is to get to March, get to June, uh, get to May. That's when it's uh, going to be a, a big difference for you. What you're also going to notice too, if you go to the action reports and go to um, product info, this will tell you um, what your impulse buys are. This is a, a an important part of uh, selling products and stuff. Right now, if you look, I, I have impulse buys near the cash register. That's something I've noticed with a lot of ones I looked at that a lot of you are uh, not putting impulse buys by the cash register. If you watch this um, relatively slowly, um, you should see, uh, we may not see some now, but um, let me get a little bit faster here. Now, see, they're also picking up these here at the beginning. I put the impulse buys at the at the front as well. But impulse buys are your your basketball your basketballs, your baseballs, your hockey pucks, lacrosse balls, all that stuff. So you want to uh, put those things next to the register. Have something there that they could. Just like when you go to a grocery store and you see uh, bottled soda or magazines or gum or candy, those are impulse buys. Not necessarily going into the store to buy those products. Uh, but you're also but you're going in to 
um, get other products and you end up getting those on the way. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that if I look at um, my sales and margins, this will tell me individually what I've sold of every items. And you're going to see currently I'm selling a lot of hockey sticks and hockey pucks because it is the seasonality of the product. January and February are very big months still for hockey. So you're going to see a lot of that product being sold. Okay. One of the things you want to look at is um, soccer goals. That's more of a fall sport. Um, you know, starts up in the spring too for a lot of people as well. But in the winter months, you're not going to sell as much. Baseball sales are really down right now too as well. Um, but as I get through the seasons, you're going to see that you're going to need to change your ordering process probably based on what season you're in. Okay. The thing is too, have enough product available. If you have more shelves out here, you got more product places to put products. Okay. If I look in the back of the store. Two, I want to make sure that my stock room has got plenty of shelving space. There are ways to make, uh, you can move these two shelves together. You can put shelves back to back to create more spacing, okay? What you want to avoid doing is you want to make sure you have shelving for every product, okay? If you do it like this, this will allow for extra room in the back room. You can stack these two shelves together, okay? That's a little bitty tip that, so now, if you looked at before, I can get more, a lot more product in the back shelf-wise, okay? All right? So I would also look, too, to see at the comments section if I'm missing certain items that they can't get delivered, okay? Notice there's a lot of spots for basketball hoops. Um, you don't want to overorder basketball hoops or soccer goals. If I look at my purchasing for those two things there, I can... Um, I'm ordering 200 units over when it when it replenishes to 200 units when it falls below 50. That's pretty good for a lot of the smaller items, but the basketball hoops, I don't order a lot of. 25 units when it falls below five for basketball hoops, soccer units or soccer uh, goals 30 uh, when it falls below 10. So you don't want to overorder those because you don't have the storage capacity for that. Okay. Uh, but let's get to what I wanted to get to and show you is if I get to March and March and uh, May and April in the spring time, you're going to see a lot more. Uh, I'm going to show you the change in sales that happens as the season goes on. I'm currently making about $8,000 a week in profit. Okay. All right. I just went up quite a bit. Weekly profit went up to twelve grand. I didn't really do much. But what we're going to probably see is that we're going to notice an increase in baseball items. Look at that. A while ago, I was in the 20s for all baseball helmets, baseballs, baseball bats, and baseball gloves. Now, because that's a popular time of year, I'm selling a lot more of those products, okay, and a large amount. So that's brought up my weekly profit right there. So March is a good month to start making profits uh, as far as that goes. The other thing I need to make sure is I got plenty of those baseball items in stock. So if I go to reports and go to comments, I want to make sure um, they're trying to deliver baseballs. I don't have space for it in the back room. So if it says I can't deliver baseballs, I can't deliver these items, I need more stock room. So I'm going to come back here, put more baseball spots. Okay, what was the other one? The cross sticks. Okay, and more. I'm going to probably put more room for baseball items um, because I it's a busy time of year for me. Uh, with those particular products and baseball gloves, okay? Also, make sure you don't ever block your entryways to these back areas, okay? So that should help there. Um, let me uh, let me take a pause real quick. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's, let's talk about impulse buys real quick. Um, notice right now my cash registers, I don't have impulse buys. I had a bunch of impulse buys here along this uh, area here. And it has cut into my weekly profit. All right, if I look at my uh, sales and margins, I could see, all right, baseballs, I'm selling one unit of baseballs. Uh, that week I sold, um, yeah, I'm not selling a lot of soccer ball. Well, 128 units, 29 footballs, hockey pucks, 26, uh, lacrosse balls, 104. So what I'm going to see is if I get an increase in those by putting impulse buys out by the register. So I'm going to go ahead and add soccer balls, and I'm going to add baseballs, I'm going to add hockey pucks, I'm going to add lacrosse balls, 
basketballs, and footballs, okay? So then I'm also going to add um, some impulse buys as they walk in. I'm going to put all these right here at the beginning. So, uh, so I'm putting those out there a few times for them to see, and they may decide to pick those up uh, as they get uh, through or as they come into the, uh, the store. Um, I'm missing one hockey pucks real quick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is it's a Monday. All right, my weekly sales was 10000 last week. Let's see if just making this increase, all right, as people come in, you see they're taking stuff off the shelves there. I am also selling some things by the cash register. Not as much because they're picking up a lot of impulse buys as they're coming through, okay? But see how all that's selling. I'm picking that up. Now, Grant, they still could go buy them in their, their sections that they have here. But currently, I'm, I'm putting selling a lot. So let's get to the end of the week real quick and see if that was beneficial. All right, my weekly profit went from ten thousand dollars to thirteen thousand. I made a three thousand dollar more profit because I was selling impulse buys near the the walk-in area of the building. Okay, that that's going to be a, a a big bonus for me. If I look at my sales and margins, and I go back and look now, baseballs I sold one ninety sixty five hoops. Soccer balls, I went up quite a bit by 50, I think, somewhere in there. Now, hockey pucks, it's not a busy time of year for that. The cross balls went up some. But that's one way to increase your sales. See, I increased by 3,000 there, okay? One of the other things I noticed, too, with some people was shrinkage, all right? What is shrinkage? Well, if you go to your income statement, you got to be able to analyze your income statement. That's one of the most important parts of uh, doing virtual business. If you can't analyze what's going on with your business, you're not going to be able to figure out the basics of it. So what you need to look at on this income statement is you got your revenue at the top. This is the amount of money that you're bringing in sales-wise. It's not your profit. It's the money you're bringing in, okay? The um, cost of goods sold is what you pay uh, those suppliers for those particular products, okay? So that's what you're paying there. They're what they call gross margin is something you need to be concerned about. This is the difference between your revenue and your cost of goods sold as well as shrinkage. And that's going to give you all that money there is left over. That money, you'll use that money to pay all your expenses. And if you pay all your expenses off and you still have money left over, then that equals a profit. Okay. So some areas that you want to be concerned with is I shrinkage. I, I have $333 a week in shrinkage of things being stolen. Okay. That's not bad. All right. That's a, that's a, I can handle that number. I looked at some of them. It was five, six grand. Some of the people that were doing the turnaround lesson. That means you don't have cameras up. You probably don't have security things. So make sure you insert those things in the security section. It's worth $1,100 a month if you are getting five dollars to $6,000 in merchandise being stolen a week. So that's, that's a good thing. It's worth it. Other things to look at here too. How much am I spending on promotion and is it making a difference? Okay. You don't want to overspend on promotion like a billboard in the middle of the city for $15,000 may not bring in the revenue that you need to pay for it or justify paying for it. So you want to look at what's it cost for that particular advertisement, okay, to get that going on. I'm going to talk about promotion and advertising here in a little bit, okay. Checkouts, you know, you want to have make sure you have enough. You are going to pay for your racks and your displays. So it does cost you a little bit more to have more out. Uh, but it's worth it because you want to have product out there on, the, uh, on there. Now, if it has a bunch of delivery charges, and these numbers are really high, that means you're probably getting charged because there's no space in the stock room for the particular products that they're trying to deliver. And if they can't deliver the products, then you're not going to get an opportunity to, you're going to get a high cost there, okay? So look at it in high format, click on the high button, that will help you look through and see. Now waste, you're not going to have any waste in the sporting goods store because stuff doesn't really expire. Uh, but if you go to... Um, in the, in the grocery store setting, you're going to have a lot of waste. That's going to be a big part of it, okay? All right. Okay, I'm back. Um, so one of the things I'm going to talk about is promotion, all right? Um, you say, well, why do I need to go to my city view? City view is going to help you with some of your promotion stuff. It's going to help you to analyze, are you picking up customers based on how you're advertising, okay? So what I want to look at now is currently I have, I'm going to remove some of these billboards, okay? Well, I'm going to 
all right I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there um, so I have currently have some billboards out here for bad sports okay uh, notice these areas that I have these billboards in I've uh, put them for relatively cheap $270 per week so is that a good investment on for my business all right at 270 bucks a week that's a pretty good uh, investment uh, because I should be drawing some customers from that area and you say well how do I know if I'm drawing customers from the area if you go over to the right here there's a little button okay it's called the my uh, it pinpoint button there it has my customers so I click on this this shows me where I'm getting my customers from and if I hit play okay I'll see that I am drawing people from that area so I'm assuming that I, even though that cost is like hundred twenty seven dollars a month that the amount of customers I have there is bringing that revenue in for me okay currently I'm at negative three thousand dollars alright but that's because I haven't properly advertised correctly right now I'm all I'm doing is billboards okay but if I was to take away these billboards here you would see I would lose these people here they would not come to the store anymore after a period of time they will they will cease to start coming so let me, let me get this going a little bit and see how there's not there anymore so I've lost those customers because I moved those billboards now I put the billboard back and I went down to negative six thousand instead of negative three thousand put the billboards back okay I should be able to see the benefit of having those billboards okay um, and let's see if it gets it should increase some people back in in those areas see how now those customers come back I'm at negative four thousand okay all right here's the other thing is look at these areas here if I was to put a billboard down here let's say in the middle of the city for 15 grand okay that's a lot of money that's a lot of cheeseburgers as I like to say it's a lot of money so if I hit start watch I'm gonna pick up a ton of customers okay but what I got to look at is, is my profit increasing? All right, it's really not increasing uh, at all. It's actually I'm losing money. I'm losing more than I was before. Okay, and the reason that is is because I'm paying way too much for the advertisement. Okay, so in that situation there, that billboard didn't make sense for me to put it there. All right, so that's way too expensive for me. Okay, so let's let's move it here. Let's try this area here. So I put a billboard there. Okay, for five grand, yeah, that did increase some business there. Notice all these people I picked up. I picked up quite a bit. Now I'm making a profit. So in that situation there, that spot was a pretty good place to put the billboard. And you can see where it's at if I take off the customer thing. Okay, not saying that's where you need to put your billboard, but maybe that's a potential possibility. So that brings in about three thousand dollars in profit for me. Okay, all right. The next thing I want to take a look at is, all right, well, now I'm bringing in three grand, and I've got a pretty good customer base, all right, but I want to draw some more people. So, so what are ways I can advertise more to draw people? Let's do rate, radio advertising, okay? Currently, I'm not spending any money on that. If you look at my advertising on my income statement, you'll see that I'm spending uh, on uh, advertising promotion Roughly right now, I'm spending $6,000 a month on advertising, okay? So I'm making about $3,000 in profit, so it's being beneficial for me. I just got to determine, is that going to make sense to add in radio or newspaper or email, okay? What I'm seeing with the newspaper ads is a lot of you are giving too good of deals, and that's cutting into your overall gross margin because you're, you're selling things so cheap, you're not generating enough revenue. So you got to watch out for that okay so with let's uh, look at adding radio promotion alright so we're gonna add about a thousand dollars two thousand dollars in spending on radio advertising so let's go to actions and let's go to radio advertising I'm gonna put in a thousand on uh, techno pop who doesn't like techno pop alright and I wanna put a thousand dollars on classic rock okay so you're gonna see am I gonna get an increase in business alright I did pop up some customers there I jumped from three grand to eleven thousand dollars there. So yes, that was definitely beneficial to add in the um, extra money there on the radio advertisement. So if I go to my income statement, now I'm spending roughly. If you look at promotion wise, I'm spending eight thousand dollars on promotion, but my profit increased from four thousand nine hundred sixty-four dollars a week to eleven thousand. Adding two thousand dollars in promotion 
increase my sales by that much. Now granted, depending on what time of year it is, that could be a little bit different too. We could have started selling more soccer stuff. There's other factors that come into play, not just that, all right? What I've seen a lot of is that people do uh, coupons. If you go to newspaper circular and they do like a buy one, get one free, let's do, we'll do uh, baseballs, all right? So we're gonna do buy one, get one, okay? And we're gonna do uh, one of that, and we're gonna do buy one, get one free on soccer balls, soccer balls too as well, okay? Now, insert that, okay. That is too good of a deal. So what you're gonna see, I'm gonna hit okay. So now I'm gonna go back to my store and take a look at it, all right? And we're going to, Make sure I set that up correctly real quick. Newspaper circular. All right, so I've got that set up. I'm paying $2,500 a week. All right, what's this going to do to my sales? Let's run it. All right, if you run it slow, you're going to see I can't keep... I can't keep soccer balls and baseballs on the shelf. So I'm selling a lot of that right now, okay? See how much I'm selling it? But look at my profit. My profit just went down by $6,000 because that is too good of a deal. What is happening is, if I look at my income statement, I went from generating um, $100,000. I'm still selling a lot, so I'm selling more. My revenue's higher, but the problem is my cost of goods sales has increased because I may sell more product, but I'm not selling at a high enough amount that my gross margin decreased. My gross margin decreased even though I'm make, selling more revenue. I'm selling things because it's buy one, get one free. But I'm losing money every time I sell baseballs or soccer balls. All right? I'm not making money off those. So if I was to go look at my margins on my sales and margins, if I look at baseballs, I am losing 85 cents for every unit I sell of baseballs currently. Okay? So I'm losing money. If I go to soccer balls, it's going to be the same thing. I'm, oh, I'm making 14 cents off of each soccer ball I sell. That is not going to generate a lot of profit for me, okay? Now watch if I take that newspaper circular off now, remove it, okay, and keep with the same advertising I had before, what will happen to my sales, okay? I'm probably going to sell less soccer balls and less baseballs, but I'm going to make more money, though. Let me get through the week here. Oh, oh there we go. 7,587. Okay. So I did increase quite a bit, but I'm going to turn, you're going to see a slow uh, downfall in October and November because people are saving up for those Black Friday sales. Okay. So that is something that you're going to see. So that's promotion. Uh, you can do email campaign, it can be effective. Um, I, I can, I've proven that you can be, uh, uh, using radio advertising and billboards, you can be profitable just using that. So that's promotion for you. Don't be afraid, like I said, look at the city view and determine, is my promotion effective? All right, am I bringing up customers? I'm gonna remove that bill. If I look at my income statements, they are increasing uh, weekly, all right? I'm making eight grand a week now. I'm making uh, six grand. So um, that's an important part of it. You know, you also got to, like I said, look at your financial statements, read through this. Are you spending way too much on promotion? You got to see if your promotion is effective, okay? And so by just adding that extra money to radio advertising, I was able to increase my weekly profits by quite a bit, okay? I'm not saying that necessarily is going to work for everybody. It also depends, do you have other things set properly, okay? And that means, is your pricing set correctly, okay? Uh, I'm not saying there's a perfect pricing set. But what you need to think about too is, I'm not gonna give you that answer, uh, is certain items can be priced a little bit more, okay? To try to increase margins. Right now I'm gonna increase my basketball hoops to 40% margin, okay? So that means I wanna make uh, a little bit more for every basketball hoop I sell and soccer goals, all right? So I'm gonna increase those to 40%. So I'm increasing the price. My cost is $34.99. Uh, I'm going to make uh, $58 uh, when I sell it, okay? If I take it up to 50%, that pretty much doubles the cost. That's one way to look at it. So if I do 50% margin, I'm doubling that. That's going to be way too high probably. So I'm going to put it at 40%, okay? I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to currently look at 
how much money am I making off of basketball hoops? Right now I'm averaging $92 for each unit I sell, okay? With a total margin of 922, okay? So that's how much I'm bringing in weekly. $922 uh, of total margin off that basketball hoop. Let's look at soccer goals. $1,500, okay? I'm making roughly off each soccer goal um, uh, $20.55, okay? So I've increased that margin a little bit, making it to 40%. So let's see how this uh, affects that. And um, soccer balls, like I said, I'm making our soccer goals 1,500. The other one a little under 1,000. So I'm just changing my margins a little bit. Let's see. Now my weekly profit didn't go up, but that could have been other factors there. Now my profit did go up to 13,000. Let's go back and look at my income or my sales and margins. All right, just increasing that item. Soccer goals, I increased my margin, total margin, by $200, okay? By increasing the cost a little bit, all right, I uh, increased my margin by $200. Let's look at basketball hoops, all right? I increased that one roughly a little bit, not a much. I didn't sell a lot, but I'm also in a time of year where I'm not selling a lot of basketball hoops right now, okay? So that could be part of it, too, as well. But if you look at my soccer goals, that was beneficial for me to uh, to raise the price a little bit. Okay, so you got to individualize that. The other thing is to your purchasing, making sure on your purchasing. It's the last thing I'll give you tip wise. You don't want to um, over order too much and not have room for it stock wise. But you got to individualize your basketball hoops and your soccer goals. You can't order 200 units of basketball hoops. You do not have the storage room for it. You cannot order. Uh, 200 units of soccer goals, but basketball, basketballs, footballs, things like that, you can order two to 300 units of those and not have a problem with it, okay? You don't have to worry about expiration or anything like that with the sporting goods store, okay? All right, and that's all the tips I have for you. Good luck.